In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at upgrading a Windows Server 2012 domain controller to Windows Server 2012 R2. Windows Server 2012 R2 is an incremental upgrade to Windows Server 2012, offering additional features rather than making too many changes to the core operating system. Before you install your Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller, you first need to meet some requirements. First of all, your domain must contain only Windows Server 2003 or above domain controllers. If you have a domain controller that is lower than 2003, you will need to upgrade it before you install your first Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller. Next, you need to run adprep slash forest prep once in the forest before you install the first Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller. This makes a number of schema changes required by Windows Server 2012 R2. These changes can be made at any time before the deployment of the first Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller and does not affect the running of the current domain. You could, for example, run AD prep months or years before you installed your first Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller. The next step is you need to run AD prep slash domain prep once in each domain in the forest. Although this needs to be run in each domain at some stage, you only need to run it in a domain that you plan to install a Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller in. If you have a domain that you are not planning to add any 2012 R2 domain controllers to, you do not need to run the command until you decide to deploy your first Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller. The last point to remember is this does not affect Windows Server 2012 R2 member servers. If you want to try out Windows Server 2012 R2 and are not ready to deploy any Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controllers, you can always install a Windows Server 2012 R2 server and add it to the domain. If you do this, there is no requirement to run these commands before you add it to the domain. I will now change to my Windows Server 2012 domain controller and look at upgrading it to Windows Server 2012 R2. In this demonstration, I will upgrade the domain controller NYDC1 from Windows Server 2012 to Windows Server 2012 R2. In a production environment, I would personally not do it this way. I would personally run the AD prep commands and then install Windows Server 2012 R2 domain controller on a brand new server rather than upgrading an existing server, as it is less prone to problems doing it this way. However, in the real world, this is not always possible, and you may need to perform an upgrade like the one that I'm about to perform. Just like if you were upgrading a client operating system, the operating system that you want to upgrade from needs to be booted into before you can run the setup. In this case, NYDC1 is already running and I am logged in. I have put the setup DVD in the computer, so all I need to do is open the DVD and run the setup. The setup will start up and I will get the option to install now to start the upgrade process. The first screen of the wizard asks if you want to go online and obtain the latest updates before starting the update process. It is recommended to select the top option, Go Online to Install Updates Now, in order to ensure the latest updates are installed at install time. You can always install the updates after the upgrade. However, it is possible, due to a software problem, that setup may crash. By installing the updates, this means that the latest updates will be installed, reducing the chance that there will be a problem with the upgrade, and that is why I also recommend to download these updates before the upgrade. Once the upgrades have been downloaded and installed, the setup will continue. How long this takes depends on the speed of your internet connection. On the next screen, you will need to enter in your product key. Once this has been entered, on the next screen, you need to select if you want to install the core interface or the full GUI interface. In this case, I will select the full GUI interface and move on. On the next screen, I need to accept the license agreement, 
and move on. On the next screen, you need to determine if you want to perform an upgrade or a custom install. If you select a custom install, this will install a fresh install of Windows. I want to perform an upgrade, so I will select the top option, Upgrade Install Windows and Keep Files, Settings and Applications. The setup will now perform a compatibility check to see if it can detect any problems. This will check the hardware and Microsoft software, however additional vendor applications are not checked and the administrator will need to perform their own checks to ensure that these applications will work with Windows Server 2012 R2. The compatibility report will be saved to the desktop if you want to read it later on. If I scroll down, notice that there is an error message at the bottom. Before the install can be started, the command AD prep needs to be run as indicated. To do this, I will exit the setup and once back at the desktop, I will press the Windows key followed by the X key to bring up the quick access menu and from this menu, I will select the option for the command prompt. From the command prompt, I need to change to the directory on the DVD called support and in this directory, the folder called AD prep. The next step is to run the command adprep slash forest prep. Once the command runs, it will remind you that the lowest domain controller supported is Windows Server 2003. Before you run this command, make sure that you do not have any domain controllers that run Windows Server 2000. To start upgrading the schema, press C and then press enter. Once the process starts, it is not reversible, so this extra step has been added to ensure that you are aware of what is happening before you run the command and commit to the changes to be made. The process of upgrading the schema does not take too long to complete. The older your schema, the longer it will take, but the process is generally quite fast. The next command that I will run is AD prep slash domain prep. Notice this command did not take very long at all to complete. Once again, if you are upgrading from an older domain, for example, you are running Windows Server 2003, this process will take longer. Since I am already running Windows Server 2012, not many changes need to be made. Since I have made schema and domain changes, before I start the upgrade, I want to replicate these changes to the other domain controllers. To do this, I will run the command rep admin with the parameters slash sync all and slash APED. Note the last parameter is case sensitive and the E is lowercase. This command with these parameters will force a sync from this domain controller to all other domain controllers on the network. The speed of your network will determine how long this process will take. It is a good idea to wait for this to finish before starting the upgrade. If you are planning to perform an upgrade to Windows Server 2012 R2, AD prep can be run any time before the upgrade. For example, it is not uncommon in large companies for an enterprise administrator to run these commands possibly months in advance and another administrator at a later time perform the upgrade of the domain controller. Now that the changes have been replicated, I will exit out of the command prompt and run the setup again. Since I have already gone through this, I will quickly select the same options that I did previously and keep going through the install until I get the installation type screen. On this screen, I will once again select the option Upgrade Install Windows and Keep Files, Settings and Applications and move on. Like the last time, the compatibility report will be run and saved to the desktop. This time, when I look at the results, there is no error message displayed that will prevent the install from running. Once I press Next, the upgrade will start. The process does take a long time to complete. On this computer, it took just over half an hour to complete, so I will pause the video and return when it is complete. Once the computer has started up again, 
at first there does not appear to be too many changes except for the name change at the bottom of the screen from windows server 2012 to windows server 2012 r2 once i log in the desktop looks much the same as windows server 2012 server manager looks the same once i close server manager notice at the bottom left hand corner there is now a start menu icon when i press this button it will bring up the new start menu just like in windows server 2012 however notice that if i go back to the desktop if i now right click the start icon i get the quick launch menu this is a great feature as before you could only access this menu by pressing the windows key followed by the x key however when using remote control tools the shortcuts sometimes do not work. Lastly, notice that when I move the mouse cursor to the top right of the screen, Charms opened just like before. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on upgrading to Windows Server 2012 R2 and have found it helpful. In later videos, I will look at the new features in Windows Server 2012 R2, so I hope to see you in these videos from us, all free from our website or YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.